Hey guys, Seth with Flex Innovations here. I just wanted to show you how to set up your transmitter, receiver, and Flex F3 that was included with your FV31 Cypher. Now this is the Betaflight configurer that we're going to be using here on PC. Uh, if you're using the SpeedyB mobile application on iOS or Android, the process is very, very similar, though the app interface does look a little bit different when comparing it to the configurator. Before we get started, we do want to make sure we remove all the fans from the aircraft. Just for safety's sake, we don't want any accidental swill-ups or anything to hurt anyone or get any parts or anything entangled in the fans. Also, it's a good idea to go ahead and get a base transmitter model set up. We want to make sure we start with a blank model in your transmitter. Don't use anything from a previous quad or airplane or drone or whatever else you might have in there. Uh, if you don't have an extra model memory available and you're wanting to override an old one, go ahead and reset that model just to be safe that everything is back to the defaults in your transmitter. Okay, so now that that blank transmitter model is set up, we want to go ahead and get our receiver connected to the Flex F3. Uh, this will vary a little bit depending on the receiver type and connection type you want to use. Uh, for most people that are using a standard serial connection like Jetty EX bus, Fataba S bus, etc., you'll use the included 3 to 4 pin male to male connector. Uh, if you're using a receiver like the Spectrum 4649T, uh, you may change the connector a little bit in order to get the telemetry function from Betaflight. I'll go ahead and put a drawing up on the screen that shows you how to connect uh, Spectrum with telemetry or the standard serial connection like Fataba S-Bus with the 3 to 4 pin male to male. Go ahead and connect your receiver to the Flex F3, uh, however your particular receiver needs to be connected, and you can also go ahead and bind your transmitter to your receiver at this time. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to get your transmitter and receiver bound, and we'll meet right back up here on the Betaflight Configurator. Now that we've got the transmitter model set up, receiver bound to the transmitter and connected to the Flex F3, we'll go ahead and get into the Betaflight Configurator. If you haven't already, go ahead and remove your fans from the aircraft, just for safety reasons, don't want anything bad to happen. Go ahead and turn your transmitter on and power up your Cypher with the flight battery, and then connect it to your computer via the USB to micro USB cable. Once you've connected it with the USB cable, come up here to the top right hand corner and click connect and it'll pull up all the settings and everything that's currently on the Flex F3. Okay, we're going to come down here on the left hand side and select the configuration tab. This is where all of our receiver settings are going to be selected and we're just going to scroll down until we see the receiver section down here. So right here is the connection type. Now we want to select what type of receiver input we're using, not necessarily receiver itself, but the type of connection being made. Most people are going to be using the serial based receiver but if you're using another type of connection you can change that here. Once you've selected that you can go ahead and select your protocol or receiver provider. In my case I'm using Spectrum. If you're using SBUS you can select uh, SBUS, uh, JRXBUS, SUMD, Jetty EXBUS, whatever. Um, but if you're using like the standard Spectrum SRXL you're going to select this one here that says SRXL. You can kind of ignore these two here uh, for Spectrum users. Okay, so the last thing we want to do here is decide if we want to get Betaflight telemetry back to our transmitter or even if we can. Uh, for those of you using like the Spectrum 4649T receiver, uh, you can go ahead and turn this on and connect it via the telemetry method as shown in the manual. Uh, for those of you that aren't sure about this, uh, don't want to run it, or just using a standard serial connection that's not possible to run this Betaflight telemetry, you're going to leave this off. Uh, but basically we're just going to go ahead and come down here to where it says telemetry turn that little tab on to the yellow position and that'll turn the telemetry on for us. Again, like I mentioned, if you're not sure about this, um, just leave it in the off position uh, by default and that'll get you working. We'll click save and reboot. And Flex F3 reboots and is ready to continue. Okay, now that the Flex F3 has rebooted after that save, we're going to come back down here to the receiver tab. And this is where we're going to select the channel order for our system. Uh, for Spectrum users, you're going to uh, select Throttle Aileron Elevator Rudder. For Fataba users, you're going to select Aileron Elevator Throttle Rudder. So depending on what your particular setup is, you just want to select that. In my case, I'm using Spectrum, so I'm going to select the Spectrum option. And again, click Save at the bottom, and that'll save the changes to the Flex F3. Okay, now that we've saved the channel order there, we're going to stay on this receiver tab here and we're going to scroll down a little bit and start working on the transmitter uh, setup. If you look here in this bottom uh, right hand box where it says preview, this is a little diagram that kind of explains the aircraft. 
Uh, it's just since it doesn't know the aircraft and what it looks like, it just presents as a box here. But back would be the rear part of the aircraft, front would be the nose or the uh, front edge of the aircraft, bottom is the landing gear side, etc., etc. The really cool thing is we can actually check our reversing here in our transmitter to make sure everything's going to respond as Betaflight thinks it should. So if I simply apply right aileron here, we should see a right roll on the little diagram. In this particular instance, it actually rolls left. So this tells me that we need to reverse the aileron for my particular setup. So I'm going to reverse that and check it again. So roll right, it rolls right roll left and it rolls left so that's working good and we're just going to repeat the same thing for elevator and rudder so pull back on the stick for elevator it pitches up like it should push forward it pitches down like it should so that's good now we're going to go ahead and check yaw so I'm going to yaw right the front of it should go to the right and it doesn't so it's actually backwards so we're going to reverse the rudder and repeat the process here we yaw right looks good y'all left looks good now this may be different for each transmitter that you're using some transmitters may require reversing to be done some may not it just depends on your particular setup so check this once you have that set up in your transmitter then we'll move on okay so the last thing we need to do on this page is actually check our centers and endpoints or travels for our transmitter each one, each transmitter and receiver brand may be a little bit different but we need to set these so that beta flight gets and receives the data that it's expecting before we get started with this, do be sure to double check and make sure your throttle trim is in the center or neutral position as this can affect your low throttle endpoint. Betaflight expects to see 1500 centers and 1000 on one extreme and 2000 on the opposite extreme. So if we take a look here, uh, my roll is centered at 1500 as is my elevator and rudder. If yours is not, this is where you may want to go into your transmitter and adjust the sub-trim of your transmitter to get these values to be 1500. If you take a look here, as I scroll up and down my aileron sub-trim, you can see the value actually change. And we just, like I said, we just want this to be pretty close to 1500 within a point or two. So there we go. Now that that's set up, we're going to go ahead and check our max and min uh, movements, our travel adjust. So for roll, I'm going to go ahead and move the stick full left. And you can see we're getting uh, 1160. We actually want this to be 1000. And because it needs more throw, we're going to actually increase travel for that side. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold left aileron. And I'm just going to slowly increase the travel in my transmitter until this reaches a thousand on this side and two thousand on the other side. Okay, so there's pretty darn close to a thousand with left aileron. Now let's check right aileron and this should be 2000. We're just a little short just like the other side. We can expect the values to be pretty similar left and right. So my left value is 147. I'm going to go ahead and increase this to 147 in my transmitter. Okay, so I'm at 147 and you see I'm just a little bit shy. So I'm going to try to go up one more click. And we're at 2001, so that's perfect. And we're just essentially going to re repeat the same exact thing for uh, elevator, rudder, and throttle. So move the elevator stick. You can see it's short, and we'll just keep bumping them up until all four reach 1000 and 2000 at the extremes. Okay, so we got our sub trims and our travel set up appropriately. So as we move the stick, you can see that we go from 1000 to 2000 on each side. Like I said, it doesn't have to be spot on perfect, but it should be within a few points. But uh, once that's all set up, we're done with the radio setup. Uh, from here, you'll want to go ahead and just finish with the uh, rear fan angle adjustment on page 21 of the instruction manual. Use the gauges there, they're a great help in setting up that fan angle. Uh, we'll do another video on how to calibrate the Flex F3 for the self-leveling modes, and uh, check out that whenever you guys get a chance.